In our cities, no matter how big they are, the space is largely occupied by streets. Streets that connect our home to the rest of the town, to the market, to the library, to the school. Streets respond to our need of staying connected, of feeling part of a society that works solely thanks to everyone's contribution. And our need of connection is so strong that even in those places where there is no space to build roads, we have managed to find a solution. Here in Venice, people stay connected through canals and bridges. Almost 200 canals and more than 400 bridges all together a town that otherwise would be just an archipelago of 124 independent islets. Independent, being part of a city means exactly the opposite. We create connections to depend on each other because we need to cooperate to achieve a common goal. And this is the definition of a network. The brain is a network. It's divided into many structures, each of them with a function. And exactly like in a city, most of the brain space is occupied by connections that make all parts work together. Let's have an example. We are in Venice. Let's assume we want to take a ride on a gondola, which is the typical traditional Venetian rowing boat. For our brain, this is a precise task. Identify the gondola, planning the movements to reach it, and finally executing them. This task involves many parts of the brain that are connected together. First, our eyes, that see the gondola and transform the light into an electrical signal. This goes through a crossroad deep inside the brain, where it's redirected to the back of the cortex. Here, the electrical pulse is translated into a meaningful language. This is used by other brain regions to understand that what we are seeing is indeed a gondola and where it is located. Eventually, this information is used to plan the movements we have to do. And finally, electrical pulses are sent to our legs, making us get on board. All these brain parts can be linked because they're made of neurons, a cell type that has the perfect shape for making connections. And this is the subject for today's episode. How are these neuronal connections formed? We are going to meet a master glassmaker, which is a traditional activity in Venice. He's going to help us understand how neurons get woven in the brain network, molding some neurons out of hot glass. When a neuron is young, it is a simple round cell, but eventually many processes start to extend in all directions. One and only one grows farther than the others. The shorter filaments are called dendrites, while that single long one is the axon. And this is how a neuron looks like. It's the smallest single unit of the brain network and its job is to receive electrical signals and pass them to the next one. This is possible because it's a polarized cell, which means that its shape allows the information to flow only in a specific direction. In most of the cases, the electrical signals arrive to the dendrites and travel to the cell body. The cell body sums all the incoming inputs and if the total signal is strong enough, an output pulse is shot along the axon. A neuron alone cannot do any computation, but if you connect the axon of the first cell to the dendrite of the second one, and you keep repeating this with many billions of cells, you create a network that allows the brain to make many calculations in a very efficient way. Let's now focus on this spot here, where the axon connects to the dendrite. This connection is called synapse. Synapses are the plugs that allow the electrical signal to go from one cell through the axon to the next one. And now a question arises. How does a neuron decide where to connect its axon? Which means also asking, how do neurons from different parts of the brain get connected? The choice of the target relies on the way the axon grows. While the axon starts to extend, a structure called growth cone forms at its tip. The growth cone resembles a hand with long slender extensions. When it moves, it drags the axon behind it, which gradually grows more and more. 
But the graph cone is not only a motor structure, it is also a sensor which is able to detect cues that are released by the other cells. You can imagine it as a floating gondola and the brain cues as the road signs on its way. The graph cone navigates the brain following these cues. Some of them indicate a direction, some others tell you to stop and turn. The combination of all signals defines a path, forcing the axon to go towards a specific target within the brain. When the gondola arrives at its destination, a rope securely docks it at the wharf. In the same way, when the axon reaches the target, adhesive molecules tie together the axon to the dendrite, forming the synapse. And this process is called synaptogenesis, the generation of new synapses, the creation of new connections. Synaptogenesis is a very complex mechanism with many steps and many players involved. And to make the story even more complex, a synapse is not even necessarily forever. The number of synapses keeps increasing until the first years of life and then soon after birth it starts decreasing, going down to almost half of it. And why this is happening is definitely an interesting question. But this is a story for the next episode.